Okay, welcome to Author Talk on CBSNews.com. We are joined by Rachel Steyer, author of The Steel, A Cultural History of Shoplifting. Um, Rachel, I have to say, you, you, you choose rather sexy subjects. <laughs> your, your first book was what, Striptease? Yes, uh, my first book was Striptease, The Untold History of the Girly Show. Your um, second book was Gypsy. Yes, that's right. My second book was Gypsy, which was a short biography of Gypsy Rosalie, whose moniker was the striptease intellectual. That's what drew me to her. Okay. Okay. And, and, and now we have the steel. <laughs> we have the steel, yes. Where did the idea of, of writing about shoplifting come up? Um, well, uh, in, the, in 2002, I was procrastinating, trying to not finish my first book, and the Winona Ryder trial was up. Oh. So I really first got the idea while um, reading the transcripts of the hearings of the Ryder trial and the, um, and the trial itself. So shoplifting causes, uh, it's estimated to be about a $12 billion a year, mm -hmm. not business, but that's what it costs mm -hmm. U.S. businesses per mm -hmm. year. Is the problem of shoplifting uh, in the States at least getting worse? Um, it's gotten worse over the last few years. Um, it's definitely tied to the recession, although uh, nobody really knows how exactly it's tied to the recession. In other words, generally speaking, the objects or products that people steal are not products that they need, like a loaf of bread. Generally, they're more luxury items or cosmetic items or so on. So it might be about stretching the dollar in the recession, and it might be about other forces. Is it about the danger? Uh, so for some people, it's definitely about the risk, the thrill of the steal, definitely. I think there's also organized gangs who are stealing huge quantities of items. Um, and there's a lot of debate within the retail uh, industry as to who is stealing the most. Is it the gangs or is it individuals? Generally speaking, when individuals steal, individuals who are more well off steal more often than those who may need it more? Yes, that's right. That's right. Um, uh, there's a, the largest study ever done uh, on shoplifters is a study out of Columbia University. It studied 40,000 people. And it was shown that people who earn $70,000 a year shoplift more than people who earn, I think it was $20,000 a year. So well, shoplifting- would think would need to steal right, more. Right, so it's not driven by need. That's what I'm saying, as in I need the loaf of bread, I'm hungry, um, I need a blanket or whatever. It's not driven by that, generally speaking. Generally speaking, <coughs> what, do, what do men steal and what do women steal? Um, well, it breaks down uh, along gender lines. Um, men steal uh, hardware, power tools, okay. <laughs> products like that. And women steal makeup, uh, clothing, um, household items, salt and pepper shakers, things like that. There was something about that, that uh, razors get stolen quite a bit. Is there, is there something about people getting frustrated by the cost of certain yes, items yes. and saying like, I'm not going to pay that for Definitely. this? Definitely. Well, that's, there are certain items I think that people feel that they are paying too much for, like razors. I think razors are $30. Razors are outrageously are there, expensive. See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Never considered stealing them. <laughs> <laughs> but they are. And yeah. if you go to um, articles about shoplifting that mention razors, at the end of the articles, you'll see this enormous rage in the posters, uh, yeah. comments about how much ra razors cost. So yeah, um, razors, I think, are the most commonly shoplifted item, or one of them. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's actually part, one of the chapters in the book is called Robin Hood's 2.0. Yes. So th th there's something to this notion that people feel like when they steal from businesses, companies, corporations, th they're actually doing the right thing. Um, I would say that uh, generally, or one of the through lines in the book is that people shoplift because they feel like they're redressing a wrong. They, whether that's a financial wrong, as in Wall Street has done me wrong or the you know I got a bad mortgage I've lost my house or whatever I'm going to shoplift there's definitely an I'm going to get back at the system kind of mentality that I heard a lot while researching the book and in, in, through the course of that research you spent uh, a lot of time with with shoplifting addicts yes shoplifting addicts mm -hmm. um, how, how, how bad is that problem and and, 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 and how do they get help mm, well it's not clear how bad it is uh, there are not really good statistics on how many people uh, or what percentage of all shoplifters are shoplifting addicts um, and there are a couple of groups around the country though that provide help to them there's one here in the New York 
uh, area called the National Association for Shoplifting Prevention. It's out of Jericho. Um, and then there are several others across the country that just focus on shoplifting addicts. Is there a way, uh, I is there an effective way to stop shoplifting? Um, I think it's tricky. I think it's really tricky. I think that one of the things that I found in writing the book is that over the course of the history of shoplifting, uh, there has never really been a successful way to stop it. Stores have implemented, since the 70s, more and more draconian security devices. Um, there also have been these efforts to educate people about shoplifting. Um, and neither of those things really seems to have helped. In the past, um, there's also been uh, execution, as in shoplifters were hanged. And yeah, I was uh, going to so ask you about some yeah. of the punishments. <laughs> I mean, you talk about draconian. That's, yeah, that's pretty draconian, <laughs> right. right. Um, but I mean, I think um, uh, you know, if you go into a store now, it's rare to see items that of clothing, for example, that do not have security tags on it. And it's rare to go into a store that does not have an electronic article surveillance system where if you go out and you you know the you have a tag on the item the system will go off an alarm will ring but that doesn't stop shoplifting is that, I was gonna say is, is that an effective prevention method or it, it depends who you talk to I mean I think to me uh, shoplifting is still going up despite these technologies which continue to get more extreme every year. Every year some inventor invents some new thing that's supposed to end shoplifting. So far that hasn't happened. And they make a lot of money off it. They least. make a lot of money. It's really expensive for stores to input these systems, definitely. Um, you talk about Winona Ryder, by the way, and we mentioned danger. I mean, is that, is, is, is that a classic example <coughs> of the whole of, of the danger shoplift? Oh, well, it could be. I did not interview Winona Ryder for the book, um, uh, but I think people who are not shoplifting out of need, they shoplift because they feel they've been wronged, if not financially, then maybe emotionally or psychologically, or it's th a thrill, it's exciting to them, um, or it's a sense of entitlement. I think it could be a number of things that we're driving uh, Winona Ryder. I would only be yes, speculating. Of course. Um, um, you talked about, uh, the w we talked about the impact of $12 billion, that's for shoplifting, but there's a larger number mm -hmm. of $30 billion, mm -hmm. and that's for what? That's for shrink. Shrink is the amount, uh, the dollar amount that is lost to all theft. It includes shoplifting, it includes employee theft, and it includes other kinds of theft. Employee theft is actually a bigger piece of the pie, most retail industry experts uh, believe, than uh, shoplifting. Um, it's a massive number. It's a massive it's a number. Stimulus it's a stimulus plan. Right. <laughs> if we could only take that thirty billion <laughs> and put it in the the debt, right? Um, but so. It, you look back at history, clearly it's mm -hmm. been done forever in different ways. There have been mm -hmm. prevention methods in different ways. Mm -hmm. Shoplifting never goes away? Well, it hasn't. It hasn't gone away. I think people will always shoplift. Even if people stop shoplifting every year, new people are shoplifting. You know, kids are shoplifting. Kids are walking into stores and stealing stuff. You know, so for every person who stops shoplifting, I think there's another person who's starting to shoplift. Uh, Rachel Steyer, author of The Steel, A Cultural History of Shoplifting. Fascinating read if you get a chance. Thank you very much. Thank you. You've been watching Author Talk on CBSNews.com.